I have been talking about these four number relationships that I first discovered through John Vandewal and his whole group um, through their book, Teaching Student-Centered Mathematics. It was really geared towards kids need to develop these four things around the numbers zero through 20. But the more I worked with them the, and the more I worked with kids of various grade levels, the more I realized that kids need this for all of it. These four things, we're gonna take a look at these four and how they relate to multiplication and to fractions. So if your kiddos seem to have no sense around multiplication and whether or not answers are reasonable, if they can't operate through sense making with fractions, then stay tuned for the next couple minutes here. So let's get going with spatial relationships, okay? We talk a lot about spatial relationships as being tied to subitizing. Now, we want kids to be able to instantly recognize a group of five so that when they move into multiplication, they can use that understanding to help them better visualize multiplication because multiplication starts out, it's not the only way to view multiplication, but it starts out as seeing groups of. So we want kids to be able to have a visual so that when they think of five groups of five, they have something to tie that to, right? So it starts out with things like that. I also really love using the Rec and Rec for this. Um, and this one can really help bring out the idea of one and two more and less, because when it comes to multiplication, it's just not one more and two more, it becomes one group more or one group less. Or in this case, when you're doing times seven, sevens are not friendly, but fives are. So if you can visualize, and instead of seeing four groups of seven, if they can see four groups of five, and then two more, and then two more in there, that helps them to better understand some of the relationships and get more fluent with their facts if they have these relationships built, right? Um, the other big one is the benchmarks of five and 10, and this still plays a huge role when kids are doing multiplication. This is using the bigger Rec and Rec, and this is actually a screenshot from the app by the Math Learning Center called Number Rack. If you're not familiar with that, it's great. You can find it through the App Store, but you can also find a web-based based version, so you can do it just through your computer as well. So this shows nine times six, but sometimes it's way easier to not think of nine times six, but instead 10 times six. If that was all 10 of them pushed over, that would be so much easier, right? If kids can think about how those numbers relate to the benchmarks, it plays such a huge role in their understanding and their fluency. So here's a little multiplication chart that I have used before. Um, that shows kind of the relationships. And so it has the darker colors are the ones that are kind of those, those main facts that kids need to know. And then the lighter colors are the ones that are, you can use the dark ones to help you out with. So like the dark red uh, is the times 10. And if you know your times 10s, you can figure out your times nines based upon that. If you also know the relationship of one and two more and less, that's the other key. You've got to have all of these number sense relationships working hand in hand. Same thing with the blue ones, the times fives. If you know your times fives, that helps you with your times sixes and your times sevens. So the benchmarks of five and 10 still play a huge role as kids are moving into multiplication. The last number sense relationship is part, part, whole. This is where kids understand that parts can come together to make a whole, or you can take a whole and break it into its parts. So this is basically a multiplication, the distributive property. Do kids understand that when they are doing five times seven, they can break it up and instead do five times five and then five times two? Or in that visual image that I have there of four times seven, do they see it as four groups of five and then another four groups of two? and that they can put those together to figure out what four groups of seven would be, okay? That's basically what part, part, whole turns into is the use of the distributive property. Now, as we move into working with fractions, these four number sense relationships still apply. They play such a vital role. Now, spatial relationships is the first thing, and this first image that I'm showing is what not 
to use when you first start with fractions. This is the common way that curriculums tend to show fractions. Well, they used to in the past, but I think they're starting to move away because the research is showing this is not an appropriate way to start out kids understanding of fractions. This helps kids think of it as an out of, and I'm still guilty. I have to watch myself all the time not to say out of when I'm talking about fractions. Instead of saying that as one out of three, it's one third. The fraction should be one third, but we say it as one out of three and that because of that visual, it looks like one out of three. So the reason this is so harmful and it's, it's still true that is a version of fractions, but it should be a later version of fractions that we show to kids because it's a ratio view of fractions. So the reason that this is so hard to, for kids to wrap their brains around is because then when they go to add, if I've got one third or one out of three, and I add it to one out of two, the number one thing kids respond with is two fifths. They just wanna add the numerators, add the denominators, and get their answer. And that's because of visuals like this. If I have one third and one half with that visual, tell me why it does not become two fifths. It, it's be, it, I can tell you why, because the holes aren't the same size, but it doesn't look like it to the kids. They're seeing equal sized parts if I just put those parts together, I get my answer, but that's not true. So instead, when we start working with fractions with kiddos, we want to use parts of a whole, not part of a set. The first images that I showed there are part of a set, and those are not productive images to build for kids around fractions when they first start. Not to say you can't later, but when they first start, the recommendations in the standards is to use part of a whole. So that when they see one third, they see it as one of the three pieces that makes up the whole. And when you go to add it with one half, I can't add them because they aren't the same sized pieces, right? We've got the same size whole and the same size, and we don't have same size pieces. So now I've got to think about how I can make those have the same size whole to be able, or same size pieces to be able to add those together. So the visual picture that we are giving for kids around fractions, is super huge. And so try not to use parts of a set to begin with and instead show them part of a whole. Now, as we move into one and two more and less, it's not the whole one and two, but it's the unit, one and two of the unit that we're using. So if I'm working with fourths and the kids can do two fourths and three fourths, do they know what one fourth more or two fourths more is? Do they know one fourth less or two fourths less? So this relates a lot with counting. You know, when we are counting whole numbers, we can count up and back, um, and that tells us what's one more, one less. But do we do that with fractions? If you haven't been, you should. Getting kids to count with fractions is super huge to help them understand one and two more and less. The other big one is the benchmarks. Now, when it comes to fractions, the benchmarks aren't gonna be five and 10 anymore. They become the half and the holes. So it, once you work past one, then it becomes one and a half and two and two and a half and three. Those are your benchmark fractions as they move forward. So kids should be able to take that and say, where would three fourths go? Not that they have to slice it into fourths, but they should know it's in between a half and, and one. And hopefully they know it's directly in half of half and one. And then when it comes to things like this, like 12 thirteenths, I don't want kids marking off 13 tick marks. I want them to know it's super close to a hole. And then same thing as they move past the hole, can they understand that 20 thirteenths is really 20 one thirteenth pieces? And had, is that more than a hole? Is it two? Is it one and a half? Is it close to one and a half? More than one and a half? Less than one and a half? All of those pieces. I don't need to know exactly where 20 thirteenths goes, but I want them to understand what it's close to. And that's what the benchmarks are about. Now the benchmarks become super helpful when they start having to order fractions and put them in order from least to greatest or greatest to least, whichever way you want to do it. But basically, if they can place those fractions on a number line, they put them in order. So I'm not going to go through them all right now. If you want to later, you can pause this video and work through this and try to place these fractions in order. But here's the hint. Don't use common denominators. Don't try all of those, the butterfly stuff that Sometimes we, we teach kids those tricks when they're comparing. Use the benchmarks. How do these fractions relate to those benchmarks? And see if you can place them on the number line using that. 
Now, our last part is part, part, whole. When it comes to fractions, it's not any different than what it was with whole numbers. We want kids to be able to decompose five, all the ways you can de decompose five, like one and four, two and three, and so on, and one and one and one and one and one. Did I get five ones there? I don't even know. But we want them to see all the ways that they can break apart five, right? Same is true when we get to five eighths or any version of a fraction. I want them to be able to break that apart. I want them to understand that five eighths is made up of five one eighth pieces, just like five is made up of five individual things, five eighths is made up of five one eighth pieces. And then they could break that into lots of different ways. I could have one eighth and four eighths. I could have two eighths and three eighths. And then having some of the equivalents, because if I know that I have one eighth and four eighths, four eighths, right? Four eighths is that half. So it helps me to know how five eighths relates to the half, right? It all works together. All of these number sense relationships work hand in hand to build a really huge understanding about fractions and about multiplication. Now, the last thing I will talk about with part, part, whole is don't forget, we don't want kids to just be able to break apart the number into all the different ways. We want them to actually use it. How does being able to break apart five eighths help you when you go to add? If I'm adding one half and five eighths, how does that help me? What if I had seven eighths and five eighths? What might I break the five eighths into? What if I had three fourths and five eighths? What would it be helpful to break the five eighths into to make that problem friendlier? And again, if they know their benchmarks and how fractions relate to benchmarks, that makes it so much easier. So I'm not gonna tell you the answers there. If you want to put it in the comments of this video and tell me how did you use a half plus five eighths and how did you decompose five eighths to help you out, okay? So a reminder, number senses develop gradually by exploring numbers, visualizing them, and relating them in lots of ways that are not limited by traditional algorithms. That still holds true when it comes to multiplication and fractions. Our kiddos need time to play with these amounts, play with their understanding of multiplication, play with their understanding of fractions. And if you wanna learn more about fractions in particular, I've been working with Graham Fletcher to create a series of videos He's doing the series, but I've been helping him kind of put this progression together, um, all based on the fraction progression of understanding. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope that this has helped you build your math mind about how older kids need to develop their number sense when it comes to multiplication and to fractions.